Recently, I had the pleasure of testing out a variety of products from Canadian film manufacturer Flick Film, and I discovered that they actually produced two of my all-time favorite 35mm film stocks. They sent me samples of their newest product, Aurora 800, as well as Street Candy ATM 400 and Street Candy Psychedelic Love 400, which is a mysterious film with very little information about it online. I'm here to remedy that. So I was already a huge fan of flick film before they sent me these products. I have shot like four or five rolls of Electro 100 because it is so inexpensive and all of them had well over 36 frames, which I thought was very cool and generous. <laughs> I'm going to focus this video mostly on Aurora 800 and Psychedelic 400 because there aren't many example photos of these stocks available online yet, and they're both pretty fun. Aurora 800 is very special. Unlike almost every other 800 ISO film on the market, this is not Cinestill. This is not re-spooled Kodak Vision 3 sans Ramjet. It's not a Cinefilm. It is something different, something much more exciting. And Psychedelic 400 is wolfany. It's got a thick grain structure, desaturated colors, and jewel tone shadows. It's a little bit cheaper than other Wolfen 400 reskins, and you'll find that this is a theme with Flick Film's products. They offer their products at a slightly lower price point than the competition, which I suspect is because they are a Canadian manufacturer and they're trying to appeal to a Canadian market. And I don't know if you've seen film prices in Canadian dollars recently, but oh my god. <laughs> Electro 100 is a great example. It is Kodak Aerocolor 4, which is my favorite 35 millimeter film of all time. And Flick Film sells it for like 14 Canadian dollars per 36 exposure roll, which is very inexpensive these days. Okay, pause, pause. I don't wanna see any comments down below about how you used to be able to buy a roll of color film for $4 and, and film prices are out of control these days. I started shooting film in 2021 and film prices have always been this expensive for me, so shh, don't make me jealous. Anything under $20 a roll is cheap, okay? Okay, here's a price comparison found on Reddit that is in USD, and as you can see, Flick Film's Electro 100 is the cheapest option for buying Aerocolor 4. On all of the rolls of Electro 100 I've shot, I got more than 36 frames. On one of them, I actually got 42 frames, which started to stress me out, because I was thinking, oh my god, the film never gripped, and I have spent the last six hours on foot in Japan doing street photography, just opening and closing the shutter on the leader instead of actually taking pictures. But no, nope, turns out that the roll just had 42 frames on it, and I got some gorgeous results. And speaking of results, I'll show you my results with these Flick Film products throughout this video, and I'll put the edited and unedited versions side by side so you can get an idea of what you might get straight out of the scanner versus what you can get with a little fine tuning. So, Flick Film is an inexpensive brand. The Psychedelic 400 goes for around $17 Canadian, and the Aurora 800 goes for around $22-ish Canadian. And I got 37 exposures off of each of these rolls. The Street Candy products, as well as a few other Flick Film offerings, come in these cardboard tubes, and I appreciate that. Film photography produces enough plastic waste as it is without having a bunch of these useless things lying around everywhere. And if there's an alternative, like cardboard or aluminum that can be used instead of plastic, in my opinion, there's no excuse not to use them. But that said, uh, they also don't come in boxes, and that's in order to reduce the packaging. <laughs> but I collect the boxes. So, you know, that's fine, I guess. I tried to shoot both Aurora and Street Candy in their ideal environments. Street Candy Psychedelic 400 sounds like it's meant for street photography, so I obliged and shot this roll downtown San Francisco. Aurora 800 is meant for low light portraits and scenes that require high color fidelity. So I shot some pretty portraits on it in studio, as well as some neon light scenes downtown. I shot both at box speed, developed in C41, and they were scanned by the lab in Vancouver. So, Street Candy, Psychedelic 400. It handled the dynamic range of a hot, sunny California day quite well. I'm really happy with the overall balance between light and shadow in these images, and you have nice detail in both areas of the frame. I actually didn't edit these very much. I usually like to add a bit of contrast to my film scans, but a lot of them came back so contrasty already that I wound up just toning it down a bit instead. I love contrast in a film stock, so this was a big win for me. Now, it's easy to draw comparisons, as I have done, between this stock and Wolfen NC400. They could easily be the same emulsion, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were. I also see folks comparing it to Bomo Color 92, which is likely a very similar emulsion to the Wolfenstocks, 
but I believe that Psychedelic 400 has a slightly finer grain structure than 92. There are a lot of distributors who are selling versions of the Wolfen NC400 and 500 stocks right now. I mentioned some of them in my Japan video, and it's very likely that this is one of them. So it's an affordable option for trying out NC400 if you haven't had a chance to yet. Street Candy Psychedelic 400 is great at capturing blue and green tones. It is not so good at reds, oranges, and beiges. I really like how the skies came out and all the foliage and it was pretty good at rendering detail in these windows and in these leaves. It wasn't incredible in low light situations. These bus station shots were underwhelming for me because this was a fairly well lit area. Like this is all natural light pouring in. Not sure what went wrong there. But that said, I did overexpose a few shots and they came out totally fine. Like I accidentally metered this whole set at 100 instead of 400 ISO. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with them. Other overexposed shots on the roll were very easy to fix in Photoshop. So I definitely recommend overexposing this film a little bit if you can, just to save you from the horrors of accidentally underexposing it. Overall, Psychedelic 400 is a good film worth trying with a fun vintage vibe and novelty qualities. Okay, now let's talk about Aurora 800. Oh, Aurora 800. <laughs> it's perfect. It's gorgeous. I want to buy it all and sit on it like a dragon and drop spent canisters of it into the outstretched hands of my admirers. If you slay me, I burst into a shower of cardboard film tubes and I have a 95% chance of dropping a roll of Kodak era color and a 5% chance of dropping a roll of Aurora 800. I want to sit in my penthouse apartment and look down at the peasants in the street still shooting Cinestill as I pet the film fridge in my lap crammed full of rolls of this precious film. Uh, why are they so precious? <laughs> well, as I mentioned, Aurora 800 is not Kodak Vision 3 500T, like pretty much every other 800 ISO film on the market. It is a purpose manufactured C41 color film. And unlike Vision 3, it is daylight balanced. It is one of very few, <laughs> very few. And I mean, look at it, so perfect. This image is perfect. I didn't need to edit it. It came out of the scanner perfect which is the photographic equivalent of a full odds shiny Pokemon, if you know you know. These images are also great. I almost never post film work to my Instagram feed because I shoot with so much experimental film, but the Aurora 800 images made the cut. <laughs> Gorgeous red tones, high fidelity blues, lush greens, deep oranges, everything you could ever want in a film. This is in this one. What is it? I'm not sure, but there's a hot debate about it online. I read the entire discussion about it on this forum and left unconvinced as to what it was, but there's not a lot of things that it could be. Definitely a Kodak stock, like absolutely no doubt about it. I will say with 100% certainty that this is a Kodak stock. Which Kodak stock? Couldn't tell you. It could be whatever 800 ISO film is in the Kodak disposable cameras. Some people say this is Kodak Gold 800 and others say it's Kodak Ultramax 800 and some people have this other weird name for it that I forgot. <laughs> this film, as far as I know, is available only in the Kodak disposable cameras. You may find it hard to believe that Kodak would manufacture an entire run of 800 ISO color film to be used exclusively in the disposable cameras and not marketed to consumers in any other way. Whatever film that is, it's probably, almost certainly, what Lomochrome Color Negative 800 is made out of. Yeah, don't forget the stock exists. <laughs> Another option is that it could be the only 800 ISO daylight balanced color film that Kodak sells directly to consumers. Portra 800. <laughs> After all, most of these product reviews don't neglect to mention that Aurora 800 is great for rendering natural skin tones. So I am very curious to know what all of these 800 ISO daylight balanced products have in common, whether they're functionally identical, nearly identical, or just the same stock. But the only way to know is to test them all side by side. And I have just spent about $70 to do just that. Stay tuned for that video in the future and Kodak don't sue me. <laughs> oh my god. In the meantime, let's close out this video and talk about Flick Film, the company, who they are, and the other products that they have to offer. Flick Film is an Alberta-based company that offers a range of film stocks, photochemicals, and film photography accessories. The brand ethos is focused around environmental sustainability, which is fabulous, especially in a hobby that requires so much environmental on sustainability. <laughs> Unlike the other companies I've talked about on this channel, they're a pretty small operation. Judging by this charming reel, it's a five person team, which is pretty impressive because I've found their products on shelves around the world. Something that I really like about their website is that their product listings usually actually tell you what the product is. Here's Cinecolor, which is respooled Kodak Vision 3. And here's Chrome 100, which is respooled Kodak Ektachrome. As much as I enjoy the guesswork about what a product is and where it comes from and who actually is coding the film, 
that's not necessarily what most film consumers want to do. So I appreciate that Flick Film includes this information wherever possible. Obviously there's non-disclosure agreements and things like that, which prevent them from disclosing this information about all of their offerings, but it's still a good practice. <laughs> most recently, Flick Film teamed up with the iconic Street Candy brand. You may have shot Street Candy before it was a Flick Film product. Almost exactly two years ago, Street Candy posted a farewell message to their Instagram page, announcing that they were being forced to close, essentially due to rising costs, making it impossible to produce the film at a reasonable price point. However, only one year after this heartbreaking announcement, they posted again, saying that they were teaming up with a new manufacturer to get Street Candy back on the shelves. Now, I always wanted to try Street Candy because the name sounds delicious, so I'm pleased that I now have a few rolls of it sitting in my fridge. So far, the Street Candy Instagram page has not posted about Flick Film's psychedelic Street Candy 400, so I think Flick Film is manufacturing this one as its own product, distinct from the classic Street Candy brand. This is a color film, after all, and Street Candy historically has only been offered in black and white. Exciting stuff for both companies, and I am looking forward to watching them both grow as the film community gains power in the market. That is everything that I had to say today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was interesting. I hope it was helpful. You can leave a like if you liked it. You can subscribe to my channel to see more photography-related videos. And you can leave a comment letting me know what you think. If you've tried these films before, what your results were, if you want to try other ones, let me know down below. If you were inspired to go and purchase any of the products that I discussed in today's video, you can do so by clicking the affiliate link for Freestyle Photo LA down in the description below. This is the best way to buy a film. Because you get film, I get money, the channel gets funded, and everyone's happy. Another way that you can offer your support is to buy me a coffee using the other link below. It is a one-time $5 donation and all proceeds from this link go directly towards improving the content that I'm able to offer on this channel. Thank you so much to anyone who considers this. I will see you all next week with another video. I'm thinking it's going to be a video essay related to one of my shorts. And I've got some cool ideas for that. In the meantime, I want you all to stay sharp and don't forget to keep shooting. Bye guys.